our, fist, our first video in, quant in quantitative methods, BATM 102, is going to be percentages, section 1.3. You've probably dealt with percentages before. We use percentages all the time, both as an actual value, like uh, we're charging 5% interest, or as a figure of speech. Uh, I'm 90% there. What we're looking at a percentage is a value which is a rate. A percentage rate is a portion compared to a base. If I was going to do a test and I got 75%, that might mean I got 6 out of 8 questions right. Or 15 out of 20. The portion compared to the base. The rate is the size of the portion relative to the base. The portion is the amount that's being compared to the standard, and the base is the standard for comparison. So in, for an exam, the standard for comparison would be all the questions that were in the exam. For, and the portion would then be the amount that were right. The rate would be the percentage of the right questions compared to all the questions on the exam. The base is usually the whole or the normal comparative value. So we have an equation that says the rate is the portion over the base, the rate R is the portion P over the base B. When we take that and algebra algebraically change it, we say P is equal to R times B and B is equal to P over R. So we could say something like R is equal to portion over the base. If I wanted to isolate P, I would multiply both sides by B. So we'd have B here, we'd have B here, and we say the portion is now the rate times the base. Sorry, the base. Doing it the other way, if we wanted to isolate the base, what we do, we'd have to do the same thing and then divide by R. So since we've already done the first step, we're going to divide by R, both sides by R. So we have portion equals the rate times the base. Multiply both sides, or divide both sides by R. That cancels out with that. And we get the portion over rate is equal to the base. Because these are all fairly simple algebra from the beginning, what we're going to do is we're going to say we don't want to remember the manipulations. We only want to remember the original formula and then solve for the value that we want. So the formula that I'm going to give you is r is equal to p over b. The rate is equal to portion over the base. And you need to be able to do the algebra to calculate either P or B from that original formula. What's interesting for us here is the portion and the base need to be in the same units. So if we're comparing money, the portion and the base both need to be dollars. If we're looking at, at exam questions, the portion and the base need to be questions. The rate itself has no units, so it's just percentage. It's percentage just as itself, doesn't have dollars, doesn't have questions, that's how it is. So as we get, we're going to do a couple examples here, but what we have to do is first look at our approach for word problems. So how I recommend doing a word problem, and we'll see this over and over, is first of all, we're just going to read the question. So we're going to read the question once, and that's done. Then we're going to reread the question, find what you're, you're solving for. Just read the question to figure out what you want to have in the end. Write it down. Reread the question and extract the data that's provided, and hopefully use the right symbols. So as we're reading through a problem, we're going to figure out all the data that it gives us, write it down, all the information's there.
At this point, we've now done all of our analysis. We know the context of the question. We know what we're solving for. We know what the data is that we're going to use. Now we're going to actually do the solving. We're going to find the correct formula and solve for the problem. So we're going to take a look at that, the set of formulas that we have. In our case, it's going to be R is equal to P over B. Find a formula. We're done that step. We're going to manipulate the formula to solve for the solution. Like I said before, we already remember one formula and we're going to manipulate it. So if we're looking for the base, we'd say B is equal to P over R. Do the manipulation. We're done. Calculate the answer using the formula. So we're now we're just going to plug in everything from 3. Oops. We take everything from 3. Put it into the formula and solve. Calculate the answer using the formula. And then our important thing here is write an English statement at the end. So once we've solved, we're going to prove that we solve it by putting it into the context of the problem. And our last check is say, does what we did in step seven match what we had from step one? So we'll do an example from our percentage problem. We're going to say a battery manufacturer encloses a 50 cent rebate coupon in a package of two AAA batteries retailing for $4.29. What percentage rebate, rebate does the coupon represent? Well, looking at this, our first thing is we're going to figure out what we want to solve. So reading through again, what we're going to get is say the percentage rebate is what we're looking for. So I'm going to say find the percent rebate. So look at the percentage rebate. What we're going to do is then we're going to say find, extract all the data. So we're going to say, we go along, we find a value, 50 cent rebate. Rebate isn't the whole price, it's a discounted price. This seems more like a portion rather than a base. So I'm going to say the portion amount is 50 cents. And I'm going to draw that in dollars, so that's 0 0.50. Second thing I'm going to look at is $4.29. That's the whole price. It's a whole amount. It seems like a base. So I'm going to say the base is $4.29. Next thing I'm going to look for is an equation. So my equation for this is R is equal to P over B. When I look at R is equal to P over B. I already have P, I already have B. So now I can just do the solving and I can say R is equal to 0 0.50 over 4.29. I can go to a calculator and calculate it. This should be 11.7%. Okay. We're not quite done with our problem because we need an English statement. And our English statement basically says, the percentage rebate was 11.7%. Period. Good English statement. I compared the English statement to the original. Find the rebate, found the rebate. Our question is done. Second problem, slightly different. 
So here I have the Provincial Ministry of Education recently announced that its government forecast expenditure of 2.68 billion on education next year represent 23.5% of the provincial budget. Bounded in the newest, nearest million dollars, what was the province total budget for the next year? Okay. So again, what are we trying to find? Find the total budget. Okay. Go through, look at things. We first look at the 26.68 billion was for education. Education is not all of it, it's a portion of it. The total would be the base. So this is a portion. So P is equal to 2.68 billion. How many zeros is that? Well, 268. Thousand million billion two point six eight billion lots of money. Twenty three point five percent. This is a percent. That's usually the good signal that it's the rate. So R is twenty three point five percent. What would that be as a decimal? Well, as a decimal, we shift everything over two. So it's 0 0.235, 0 0.235, we now have our equation, again, R is equal to P over B, we're solving for B, find the total budget, that was B, B for the base, not for budget, R is P over B, we need to solve this for B. We've got to multiply by B. So we got BR is equal to P. Divide both sides by R. We say B is equal to P over R. When we're looking at B is equal to P over R, we now have the values. We can say the base is equal to 2680. Zero, 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 all over point two three five zero point two three five. Do a calculation. So get my calculator out. Two six eight zero 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 zero. Divided by 0.235. Okay. Our problem was do it to the closest million. So we're going to ignore that part. And we're going to say, again, in an English statement, the total budget of the province total budget was 11.404 million dollars. All right, percentage subling blocks. What we're going to look at, first of all, the units must be the same. We're dividing millions with millions or billions of billions or dollars with dollars or cents with cents. Whereas dollars to dollars, millions to millions. You may need to work before or after a percentage calculation. So you might need to do a little bit of work to get some values. Like you might need to add some numbers to determine a total to get a base. 
It might be to convert a dollar amount into a number of units to get something in the end. We're going to be aware of the base, which is a standard when percentages are larger than one, because we could have a 230% amount for our budget. Okay? In that case, our portion is going to be larger than our base, larger than our standard. And we're going to watch for opposites. So if we're looking at opposites, 1 minus the rate is the opposite rate. For instance, we could have purity versus impurity. We could have an amount paid versus an amount owed. They're opposites. Okay. So now, do your homework. We're going to do the homework again. 30 minutes every day works best for the course. You're going to attempt a range of the questions for the section. What I mean by that is if there's 40 questions in that section, you don't necessarily have to do all 40 questions, but doing two or three at the beginning, making sure they're right. The odd numbered questions, the answers are in the back. Uh, the even numbered questions are there as exercises to have you do more practice. Uh, there is a study guide that is available. On, I don't think they have it at the bookstore, which might give you a, little, a couple more answers than, uh, than the textbook does. Do three or four questions, make sure you're getting it right. Then jump ahead five questions and try it. And if that works, jump ahead another five questions and try it. If it doesn't work, maybe go back two or three. Try it again. The questions get progressively harder as you go on. So jumping ahead five, ahead five, ahead five, you only do eight questions in your half an hour. Once you get to your stumbling block, you go back a couple questions, try those, it gets you to the right level, and then you can move on, kind of see the tricks through the questions, and get along for the homework fairly quickly. Bring any questions that you have in the homework to class. This video is the lecture portion for, for percentages, if you have questions about percentages, bring them to class so we can discuss them as a group. That's it for section 1.3. Thank you.